you're going to see a major change in your mindset. It is the most powerful life-changing force in this universe. I did not realize that for years, but I totally realize that now. Hey everybody, this is Billy Cox coming to you live with the Break Free Podcast where we talk about everything from business, sales, leadership, life, and the thing that everybody wants to talk about, money. In today's show, we're going to dive deep into taking control or taking back control of your future. If you think about it, there's a whole lot of craziness going on out there right now. We have political pressures. We have social pressures. We have economical pressures. We have family pressures. And all of these things can start to weigh us down and we get caught up in all of these daily demands and these daily distractions that are going on. I mean, they're th talking about recession and they're talking about depression and inflation and war. And many people don't know what to think and they wind up getting stuck trying to keep up. Also, Many times these things are taking a toll on our personal life and we're being weighed down with addiction and burdens and demands and sometimes depression and anxiety and fear and anger and pain and confusion. And many times we just don't know what to do. We start to get into this storm and we start to get into this, so to speak, spiral. And as we start to spiral, we don't know how to stop it and regain control and get our life back and get our future back. And so my hope today is to help you take back control of your future and move to that next level of yourself, that highest version of yourself. Bring out the very best of the best of you. And I want to speak from a personal experience because in my life, on the last couple of shows, I've shared with you some things from earlier in life and some of the challenges and even the loss and grief that we faced as a family. But for many years, things were going along pretty good. But about eight years ago, suddenly life started dealing some blows that actually started to take a pretty strong toll on me. And you think, well, Billy, you're a motivational speaker. You've written all these books. You've done all these different things. You mean, you know, life is hitting you? Yes, life will throw you the punches. Life can absolutely knock you down. And if you're not aware of it and you don't start to do some things to take control of it, you can continue in that spiral. In 2015, my wife and I, we started to have some serious, very serious marital problems. And we were growing apart. We had different needs. We weren't seeing anything on the same uh, place. And we were very close to divorce. We had to get some professional counseling, and we started to get that back on the right path. And just as soon as that happened, I found out my dad, my father, my, my hero, my number one mentor, had a terminal illness, and literally three months later, he was not on this earth. And that was a blow. That was a major blow. And, uh, you know, you start to rebound from that. You start to, you know, do things to get you back moving and in the right direction. And, but yet, you know, it's always there. And as things started happening, I had a business and then a business partner, right? A business partner that kind of went, a little bit crazy, went off the charts out there and created some real disruption in our own business. And so when we kept fighting, and if I didn't know the things that I knew about mental toughness and about mindset and about fighting through the challenges and that our struggles can help us develop our strengths, I would have really been in a even a tougher place. But I was definitely in a tough place. And then we felt like we were getting that back under control, and we bought this big office here, big, nice, new dream office of ours, just the way we wanted it. And we were living in our home for 20 years, and things seemed to be rolling along a little smoother. And then suddenly the pandemic come along and shut down a big part of our businesses that are out there. And if you do anything that has to do with groups or group speaking or anything that would do and you know have to do with the restaurants or anything out there, it put a halt to all of that. And 
So we fought through that. We created some new marketing methods. We kept pushing forward. And then in 2021, we had the big freeze that happened here in Dallas. And if any of you were involved in the big freeze, we've never had temperatures that low on history. And one morning, we got a phone call, and the fire department said, come to your office. We got to this office. There was nine firemen sitting in this office, standing in this office with electricity off, and water was flowing out the doors, and it looked like in some of the rooms that a bomb had exploded. We had pipes that had busted everywhere and did we were not able to use the office for almost a year, and we had to go under reconstruction. And so we're like, how many more blows can you handle? Two days later, we're at our home with no electricity, and we see water coming all out of the ceilings and walls and the floors. And our not only was our office destroyed in that, our home was destroyed in that, millions of dollars in damage. And we had to move into an apartment for... Uh, for 17 months, we moved, had to move into an apartment. And we lived in our home for 20 years. We loved our home. And about the same time we moved into the small apartment, we found out we're having some new grandbabies. And that was a very positive. But as this started to happen, I started to get into a complaint zone. I started to get into this sort of poor as me zone, even knowing what I know. So I know know out there that you may be going through difficult times. You may be going through challenging times, and yours may be way more challenging than some of these things that I went through. But I can tell you that I was getting caught up, and I started to get a little bitter, and I started to use a lot of excuses when I was talking to people, and I started to whine, and I started to complain about the current situation that we was in, and I found myself getting consumed in it. And I also felt myself, and maybe you're feeling the same way, but I felt myself getting a little more overwhelmed, so to speak, into what was happening there at the time. And Right after I found out we were having our grandbabies, I had to come to the point where I made a decision. I literally woke up one day and I said, I am not willing to live at this level anymore. This is not me. I talked to some people that I knew and they were like, Billy, you don't even seem like yourself. As a matter of fact, I called our one of our counselors and I went and saw our counselor and she was like, don't let this steal your peace. You're better than this. And I went and I looked in the mirror and I said, you know, if it is to be, it's up to me. And I took a personal evaluation of all the challenges and the problems, and I just wrote down everything that I thought was a challenge, everything that I thought was a problem, and I started to attack each of those steps one day at a time. And I started to take back control of my future. And I can say right now that literally... Our house has been redesigned. Our office has been redesigned more beautiful than ever. I have two beautiful um, grandbabies that are up and very excited about the future. Good things are happening, but it goes back to making a decision. If you're in that downward spiral, you have to make a decision. You have to take a personal inventory. So what I would ask you today, take a personal inventory of where you're at. Where are you at mentally? Where are you at physically? Where are you at financially? Where are you at spiritually? Where are you at career-wise? And where are you at in your personal life and personal relationships? Because you've got to know where you're at in order to know where it is that you're going. So my first step for you today is simply this. And I'm going to give you five steps, five steps today that I used that's made it a big difference for me and can make a big difference in your future. Five steps to take control of your future. And the first thing you have to do is you have to take back control of your mind. There's a battle going on out there in this world between the positive and the negative, evil and good, fear and faith, scarcity and abundance. And these battles are coming at you every single day. And if you're not guarding your mind with an awareness of what's happening, 
You have to pretend and put a force shield around your mind, a force shield around your body, and decide what you're going to allow to come in. Because if not, we live in a fairly negative, like I said earlier, crazy world that will not only knock you down, but it will continue to beat you down unless you're willing to say, stop, no more. And if, if life has knocked you on your back, if you're willing to look up and then get up and then take baby steps every day. And the first step, like I said, take control of your mind. You've got to guard your mind. And that means question. Question everything that's happening. Question everything that's going on. Question everything you hear in the media. Question everything that the people around you and are surrounding you are telling you. And you know, is it real or is it their opinion? Because most of what we're listening to is other people's opinions. Because there's a lot of people out there that are fired up, enthusiastic, excited about life, that are moving forward and doing well, even in the worst of times and the most difficult times. When the crowd's running this way, the winners and champions are running the absolute other way. And I had to recognize it. I had to realize it. I had to eliminate all of my justifications all of my excuses, and start to take charge of my mind. Question everything, and then start to think new thoughts. 95% of our thoughts today are based on yesterday. So every day when you wake up, you look at your phone. Every day when you start to think all these thoughts in your mind, is based on what happened in the past. And the older we get, the more of those thoughts thoughts we have from the past, which means the more reinforcement we have from the past, and we're just reinforcing those old thoughts, which become habits inside of us. They become beliefs inside of us, and they become self-limiting beliefs. And not only that, they become our self-image, and it's the way that we see ourselves. And if we want to shift that, we have to start to realize that the past is the past, and that we cannot let the past dictate our future today. So we have to replace those thoughts. We have about sixty to 70,000 thoughts a day. And again, most of those thoughts are yesterday's thoughts. And we have to replace them with future thinking thoughts. We have to start visualizing and actualizing and seeing ourselves in a different place. And if we will start to get a clear mental picture out there of what it is we want instead of what we don't want, and we do this by taking control of our focus, because what we focus on the longest becomes the strongest. If I ask you today, what's wrong in your world? I promise you, you could start to give me five. You could just dump and dump and dump on all of the things that's wrong in your world. But also, if I ask you what's right in your world, I can promise you, you can think of a lot of good things that are going on in your life. And if we focus on the problems, if our focus is problem-oriented, every day we get up thinking about the problems, every day we get up focus on the problems, every day we're going to get up and we're going to be acting on those problems. And if we get all caught up in the problems, all we're going to do is create more problems. But we, if we get caught up in the solutions, we get caught up in the focused forward, the future, and then we're going to start to take those types of actions. So another way that you want to change your mind is just by getting some new goals. And you should just take some time to think about what are my goals 97% of the people out there don't even have a goal. They don't know what it is. So if you just really want to make a quick shift in your mind, just start to write down eight or ten things that you want to achieve in these personal and professional um, areas of your life. And write them down and just look at them and go, is this what I want? And then write down, hey, is why do I want them? And why will start to drive you and it will start to help you focus on those things. The next thing would be to, under controlling your mind, would be to get an attitude of gratitude. Zig Ziglar was my biggest mentor um, outside of my parents. And one day we were looking at a gratitude wall in his office, and Zig Ziglar said, you know, Billy, gratitude is the very best attitude because you can't have a bad attitude if you have 
gratitude. And at that point, I did not realize that. But as I started to take back control of my future, I even wrote something called a gratitude journal because I started writing down my top 10 goals daily, and I started writing down everything that I was grateful for. And if you start to write down the things you're grateful for, you can't have a bad attitude. Not only that, that gives you future thinking. It gives you reinforcement that good things are happening in your life. And not only that, the more things you are grateful for, it's proven. The more things you will have to be grateful for. Gratitude is the most powerful, life-changing force in this universe. I did not realize that for years, but I totally realize that now. When you see these things circulating in your life in avalanches of abundance, then what you're going to see is you're going to see a major change in your mindset. The next thing you have to do is you have to take control of your dreams. My question for you today is this, what's your dream? And as a matter of fact, that's a big thing that led me to this because as I started to get back on path, I started to ask the people, the same people years ago, and that the same questions I would ask, and people responded differently. Today, I feel like when I ask people, what's your dream, they sit there and most people don't know. They stare at me like a deer in headlights, and that's, I would say that that's, it's sad because most people don't have a dream and they don't know what their dream is. Taking control of your dreams, and I don't mean your goals. What I mean is, what is your dream? What is that purpose, that passion, that fire that burns deep down inside of your soul? What is it that wakes you up? shakes you up and keeps you up? What is the one thing that's going to drive you to the next level of your destiny? Let me tell you this. Most people think, I don't have a dream, or they feel like I've lost my dream and I'll never get it back. But what is it inside of your heart that keeps nudging you? What is the thing that you just wake up and you think about it? What is the thing that maybe you go a few months, but it's still there over and over again? I can tell you, seek out your passion and you will find your purpose. And within your passion and purpose, that's where you're going to find your big dream. That's where you're going to find your calling that's going to lead you to your ultimate destiny. Because one day you're going to look back and you're going to say, I'm glad I did or I wish I would have done these things? What is the one thing that if at the end of life, if you were sitting there on your deathbed, nobody wants to think about this, but ask yourself, if I'm sitting there on my deathbed at the end of life, what is the one thing that if I did not do it, I would not feel like my life was fulfilled. But if I did it, I would know that I had a fulfilled life and I'd live my purpose. What's your dream? You got to get your dream back and the final thing on the dream, number two, taking control of your dreams is this. It's whatever comes from your heart, but you have to align it with your mind. You have to admit, this is my dream. And then you have to get a clear picture of it in your mind. And when it's in your heart and when it's in your mind, you will start to move with speed and precision towards that dream path. You're going to break out of the complacency zone that you're in, and you're going to realize that, hey, man, we met up and I'm living my dreams. Number three, take control of your environment. That's pretty simple. This means literally, and as a matter of fact, another super powerful way to just change your instant state, to change your thinking, is to just change your environment. How many of you ever went to a football game or to a sports event or to a concert or to church or somewhere where there's a group of people that are positive and energized to a party. You walk into a party. What happens? Your state changes because you simply change your environment. Nothing else changed, but you changed your environment. A few ways that you can change your environment. Number one, start to declutter everything around you. Clean up the mess. Clean out your closet. Fix some things that need to be fixed. Rearrange some things. 
Get a new arrangement in your home. Do spring cleaning. Put on some new clothes. Wear some new clothes so you can change your physical environment. Number two, change your digital environment. Go out to your phone and delete all the negative stuff that you've saved and the pictures that you're ashamed of or embarrassed of and go to social media and unfollow all the junk accounts that you're following. Quit comparing yourself to everybody out there on social media. Live your own life. You're where you're at on purpose. You're where you're at, right where you're at today for a purpose, and it's part of the bigger plan. You're watching this podcast today for a purpose, and you can't change the past, and you can't keep comparing yourself to others. Compare yourself to what you do every day and then do your best every single day. And if you're doing your best every single day, good things are going to start to happen. You've got to change your social environment. Your social environment is your peer group. It's the people that you hang around. Are they lifting you up? Or are they tearing you down? Are they bringing you positive energy that's going to help you the, they're the movers, the shakers, the builders, the dreamers, and they're going to encourage you? Are they encouraging you to live your dreams, and are you reciprocating back to them and encouraging them? If you're not surrounding yourself with that type of people, change the people that you're hanging around because we become like the five people we hang around the most. This can be a blessing or it can be a curse. So change the people you hang around and things will change. You will start to elevate your mindset to a new level, and better things will start to happen. You'll take one another step in moving you in the right direction. And frankly, if that all don't work, pack up. Just move. Just get up, pack up, and move. And start something new. Start something fresh. Or get to just a new area or a new place or new neighbors or some areas where you can get new friends. Change your environment. Next step, number four, take care of your health. Health is your greatest wealth. Small changes in your health daily will lead to enormous differences in results. You all know what you do have to have to take care of your health. You got to say no to some things. You got to say no to the French fries, even if you're eating out. Throw them out the window. Change your eating habits. Change what you're putting into your body, and you'll start to develop more energy. Change your exercise routine. Get on a daily exercise routine. Get rest and relaxation. You have to have a certain amount of rest to recharge your body. Small things. Change some small things. Go outside. Take a cold shower. Listen to the birds sing. Literally sit in the sun for 10 minutes and get some vitamin D inside of your body. Practice some active meditation. Active meditation means simply just sitting there and listening, but then projecting and visualizing your future. See your future the way that you want to want it to be. Picture, get a clear picture of your future the way that you want to be. And if you'll start to take care of your health, including your mental health, remember our health is our greatest wealth. You may think you can buy it back, but you can't. And you can't win physically if you're losing mentally. Number five, and the last thing, take control of your habits. Habits are a choice, but your habits, your daily habits will dictate your actions. Your actions will dictate your performance, and your performance will dictate your results. Habits are a choice. We choose bad habits, and we can choose good habits. And if we choose good habits, good things are going to start happening. But we have to be intentional because at first, habits are hard. It's like riding a bicycle. The first time you ever got on a bicycle, it probably didn't work right. The first time you tied your shoes, you had a hard time with it. Now you can do it subconsciously. You have to do something intentionally. You have to force yourself to do it. You have to see the results, see the benefits of doing it, understand why you're doing it, and then do it over and over again repeatedly to now it becomes a new norm. And as your habits become a new norm, you change your actions, you change your performance, and you change your life. So change 
your habits. As I end this podcast today, I would say this. It all starts with action. We can talk about it all day long, but if we don't do something right now, if we don't start taking action today, we will delay it and we will get back into the same routine, the same complacent zone. This, and the complacency is the worst place to be. We will get caught back up in all the same daily demands and say, same daily distractions that have brought us to where we're at now. So instead of moving backwards, we want to start moving forward. And we want to start taking those small daily actions today that are going to lead to enormous differences in results. So I would leave you with this. Act with focus. Act with expectancy. Act with intention. Intentionally do it every day. And act as if. Act as if you already are that person that you want to become. Act as if you're already doing those things that you want to do or the things that you want to have. Because all you really have to do is step into that next level. All you have to do is step into that next version of you, the best version of you, the highest version of you. Like I said earlier, I shared with you some personal things that I've went through, and you have to fight through some of those things every day. You have to get that new attitude, that new expectancy that's going to lift you up. But one of the things that one of the things that I wrote down on my top 10 goals is I wanted to be the father, the husband, the leader, the brother, the son, the friend that God intended me to become. And then I got to thinking about it. I was going, well, who would I have to be to be that? What would I have to do in order to be that person? And I started writing down on there the person that I would have to be actions that I would have to take. And I found out that all of those areas kind of intermixed, and they intermixed in with my other goals. So all of your goals and dreams are possible. All you have to do is step up and be that person, that father, that husband, that leader, that brother, that mother, the sister, the friend, that person that you were intended to become. And you're going to break out and you're going to break through, and eventually you're going to even break free to a whole new level of your destiny. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this podcast, if you got anything out of it, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to go out there and share it with your friends and tell everybody about it. You can do it. We believe in you. You have a great day. God bless.